Welcome back, and this is the third video in the series. We're now looking at the audio amp of the Hacker RP18, and as you can see, I am actually turning into a bit of a Frankenstein. It's got life support tubes everywhere. What we have is the input voltage. We have the wires connected to the speaker. This is the oscilloscope probe going to the oscilloscope. And this is the audio coming in from the audio generator. Now, just to show that uh, things are working, I've got the speaker in line so that you can hear everything. Now, normally you wouldn't worry about doing this. Here we go. We have this wonderful, wonderful piece of kit. And according to the manual, 26 millivolts of input here should give me a nice clean signal out of here at about a watt. Let's turn on the generator and see what it's doing. And here we go. Now it sounds all well and good, but that's certainly not very loud. That is not a watt of audio. It's working, but it's not a watt of audio. And if you look at the scope screen, you'll see that the output is certainly not very pretty at all. It's very distorted, very sort of non-linear, and the only thing I can think of that's causing that is these capacitors. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to change the capacitors and then bring you back and we'll show you, first of all, the output with the changed capacitors, and then I'm going to show you how to set up the audio board so that it actually is biased correctly and is drawing the correct quiescent current. All of these things may sound a little bit complicated, but it's not actually that complicated to do, as you'll see later on in the video. 20 minutes later. There's the casualties. This is the only one of all of them that actually tested good. And seeing as I had to take it out anyway, I was gonna change it. Let's get set up again and work with the case in the speaker as we did before and see if we get much better results. Even on its lowest setting, you can see on the oscilloscope, we're getting much, much more signal. Ouch, that hurts my ears. Now we've got it together, we're set up, we're tested, and let's put the signal into it. Now I'm starting it off low, I'm gonna start at one millivolt, and I'm gonna see just what the signal looks like. Now, as you see, we have a much larger and cleaner signal. So I'm just gonna turn that off again and I'm going to uh, increase the signal to half of what it should be. It should be 26 for maximum output. Let's go to 13. And I'm gonna have to change the scale on the oscilloscope. Let's change that to, oh, I've put 30. Okay, that'll do. Now, as you see, that's 30 volts per division. So we're getting a, a fair amount of signal now. Let's um, take it up to full, 26. And let's increase this, seeing as we went to there, let's take this to 70. Right, we actually get clipping at 14 millivolts of audio going into this board. So it is working far, far better uh, than it did with the old capacitors. So the next part of this is to set up the quiescent current and the bias voltage, the midpoint voltage. So let's get into that. I'm gonna read from the manual now, and this is a photocopy which 
anyone can download. It is available freely on the internet. I believe Radio Museum has a copy, but also the Hacker Radio Group on Groups IO also has this copy. And I'm going to go through the audio tests to just uh, show what the uh, the settings are. Part one, um, with the speaker or the output meter connected, short circuit the amplifier between with a link between pins four and five of socket one. So this needs a shorting link. Now, the easiest way to do that is by turning it over, making sure you get the right pin, which is this outer edge one here and the center pin like that. It only needs to be an old capacitor leg or something like that. And the easiest way, as I say, I found is to just put a dab of solder on that pin. Just to hold that in place. Stretch that across and that hasn't taken. And it has now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the excess off because I don't want that bare wire touching this track which is actually the live track. So we've shorted that out. Let's turn that over again. Then it says connect a 0 to 10 milliamp meter between the test link terminals, having first cut the wire link. Right, this is the test link terminal here. We cut the wire link and we're just gonna open it up like that. I will remake it properly when we go to put it back together. And it says to connect a 0 to 10 milliamp meter. So let's let's grab that one and make sure that you can see see it in the shot. I also want to change that to two milliamps. We need to connect this between there and there pretty much either side of the test link. So we can do that and I can lay that down now. Okay, so let's turn that on and make sure it's in amps DC. And as you see, it's reading zero at the moment. Let's move that off of there so that you can see everything. Then it says connect a naught to 10 voltmeter between the midpoint voltage test point, which is the junction of R19, R20, which is actually in the middle of these two long resistors. Now, to get to that, it's a bit of a pig. So the easiest way to do that, if we look on the bottom of the board, that's the joint there, but it comes to this point and then to this point here, which is where the plus of C13 is, the positive of C13. So what we can do is we can get another little piece of wire and just poke that through that spare hole like so and melt the solder around it. I'll take a picture and you'll be able to see that wire sticking up. So we need to connect the positive to that wire it's going to look like a real Frankenstein's monster, this, but uh, you, you'll, you'll understand what it is. I'm going to move this and go over the top this way. And this connects to the negative. We'll, we'll use the heat sink as the negative. Let's turn this meter on. And then it says to connect to the batteries. So we need our power supply, which is here. And this, as before, goes earth onto there. And the positive is this first pin here. And let's turn the voltage on. And according to this, we have 0.1 of an amp. One, uh, so what do we want? 300 milliamps. We're less than a milliamp of current. Uh, so we need to set that to 4 milliamps, so we need to adjust RV4, which is actually this great big thing down here. And it only needs gentle pushes. There 
There we go. Four milliamps as near as, damn it. Now we've got 9.45 volts on this point. So we need to change that to give a midpoint reading of 8.3. Sorry, 8.85. And that is pretty much it. As you see, it's brought that down to uh, the level of, you know, 3.95 instead of, you know, what it was at 4.15. So that's that. Let's connect the speaker and just make sure that everything's right with the speaker connected because it needs a load as well. So where's the speaker wires? And... That one's that one. And there's the actual connection again. So with the speaker on, with the load, we're getting 3.91, good enough. And we've now got 8.86. I could give that another fiddle. Let's, there, dead on. But you don't have to because it's it's a radio amp board it's not that critical so let's just make sure that uh, everything is in shot and you can see where everything's connected you have the speaker wires you have your power wire here's your other power wire you have your midpoint voltage here which has got its negative also to earth you have the two wires across where that link is that we cut and that gives you this reading in milliamps dc round about four is what you're aiming for that's close enough i'm not going to start sliding it up and down the track just to find an extra 0.7 of a 0 0.07 of a volt uh, of a milliamp so there we go you know what's it 70 microamps we're looking at that's the quiescent current this is the midpoint voltage. As you see, it's risen slightly. So that is the amplifier board set up, fully working and ready to rumble, as they say. Now, we can do the sensitivity test, but that really needs the bass and treble controls installed, which means you need the radio. Now, we've already proved that the radio is a lot, lot louder without the, the rest of the radio connected by powering the amp board and putting a low signal in and seeing on the oscilloscope that it really did make a difference changing those capacitors. At this point it's probably time to say that the amplifier board is done and there's nothing further really to do on the amplifier board at this stage except for undo the short circuit and remake the link. And that's just a matter of either bridging it across with the two existing wires or taking that piece of wire out and putting a new piece in. You could even use the shorting link that you put on the back of the amplifier board. I'm just making sure that this isn't getting too hot and it's not. It's actually drawing um, around about 20 milliamps in this mode. So not a lot of current at all. Um, with zero input, it's sitting there just idling quite nicely.